Hi, welcome to another Business Byte. Uh, in this session, I want to cover off how do you solve problems with design thinking. I have to thank uh, Jer Jeffrey Tobias from Strategy Group for his thoughts in this process, which is about nine uh, short points. And I thought these were very good. Some of these I'd been applying myself in the many years of working in business, but uh, actually seeing these encapsulated in his article I thought was very good. And this is a company that thinks about and helps other businesses in their thinking differently and developing new directions, new strategies. The first one they say is define the problem the, that you think needs to be solved. What really is the job to be done? Uh, we can have meetings, we can have a lot of discussions, but if it's not focused, it will go many directions and actually never get the result that's needed. So what is the problem that you think needs to be solved? Try not to make this simply a variation of a solution you already have up your sleeve. It needs to weigh out their thinking. Number two, observe and emphasise. Emphasize. In design thinking, observation takes centre stage. Your aim is to gain a deep, unbiased understanding of the way your customers do things, why they do them, and develop an empathy about their habits, challenges, and beliefs. Make sure you capture your observations so you can refer back to them later. Observations may be physical, just watching, or based on open-ended conversations. I remember in the advertising days as we started to develop totally new media and creative strategies to reach our target audience, we developed a day in the life of our target audience and what they would listen or watch or read when they get up in the morning before they head off. If they're in the car or in the train, what media they were contacting, what they would pass or see during the day and then back at night and we would start to target our advertising across media that would impact them at several times uh, during the day but maybe in different media and uh, a lot of work needed but through this process we're able to be effective in communicating our strategies uh, to our target audience for our clients. Uh, number three in this process is generating insights. Generating Unbiased insights from your observations are key. The best insights give you direction to form innovative solutions. Suggestion, bring together a bunch of diverse people and have them work through the observations. Some of these will be from your staff, they could be from providers, uh, suppliers, or they could be just people uh, outside the industry that you can bring together and you will get some diverse thinking, which is really important. Then workshop some key insights as a group. Remember, ask for non-obvious, Insights, the obvious, well, they'll come too. Number four, reframe the problem. Now that you have the insights, go back to your original problem you thought that you were trying to solve. Is it in fact the right problem? Does it need reframing? This is a key step to ensure the problem you will solve is indeed the right one, because sometimes you'll come up with a solution, even in your communication and advertising, which is a solution that no one's looking for, so therefore you're not going to be effective. And a lot of times in discussions, it will get off track in a room and you probably end up with solutions that actually is not what the original problem was. Number five, brainstorm. The goal now is to create lots of possible solutions rather than trying to find the single best one. So you, you work on the principle that no idea is a bad idea. I've got a builder been helping us uh, uh, refit our holiday unit and uh, when we sat and suggested things he said no idea is a bad idea and through this process of dialogue we were able to come up with alternative solutions between us that actually solved an issue or a problem or a better solution and uh, then if just one person on their own were doing it there's not a lot of builders that think that way or even architects or designers so there'll be many ideas There'll be disruptive ideas, and that's what you're looking for. There'll be way out ideas, and you're looking for quantity of ideas, not quality, because you will filter through them, as you'll see. Number six, pick possible solutions. Once you've captured a whole bunch of ideas and voted on them, pick one or two possible solutions to move forward. It should be easy. Usually the voting process uncovers two solutions that jump right out. Give people coloured dots and give them... Uh, give them to vote on possible solutions, say five votes each. I've seen it done with a card system where people prioritise uh, all the issues, solutions into a few categories and then they go for the top three across each of the categories. This has worked very well in, 
in discussion groups when we were working on McDonald's to come up with some solutions to issues that we were facing. And we did this as an advertising agency to develop the way forward very effectively. And our outside moderator will be very helpful in, in achieving this as well. Number seven, build prototypes. See how you're going to prototype the solution. One easy way is via storyboarding, and that can be drawing rough pictures or words on a board. I often suggest to people get magazines, uh, maybe from the categories you, you're looking to be in, a whole range of magazines, and get people to pull words, headlines, pictures, or illustrations, whatever out, and create a visual storyboard of the ideas and build um, solutions from uh, a visual point of view. Number eight, test your solutions. Well, this is the scary bit, but at some point you've got to test them. Maybe go to potential clients or clients and say, we've got these ideas, what do you think? You're not trying to sell them anything at that point in time. If it's to launch into a market, get some customers around and talk to them about that idea and just see the feedback. You're not after detailed research, you're just trying to get reaction to a few ideas. And then number nine, learn from failures to achieve success. Not everything's going to work. Uh, not everything will achieve the desired results. But out of that learning, you'll be able to move forward in the right direction. I say to people today, everything's test and measure, then action. Uh, I thought it was just test and measure. measure. You can test and measure and do nothing, but you need to then action changes or move forward if something has been successful. So there we go. You've got nine steps and how to solve problems with design thinking. Thank you, Jeffrey Tobias at Strategy Group.